Fortnite, the live service game with plenty of franchise crossovers such as Marvel, John Wick, Batman, and very recently Star Wars, is just about dead on console. It all started with the launch of Chapter 2 and the introduction of forced cross-platform and skill-based matchmaking. I've already made a video explaining why I think Epic is doing forced cross-platform and there is a link you can follow in the description if you want to see that. This video is going to follow up on that one and how my thoughts have changed since then. Also, something that I didn't get across too well in that previous video was why forced cross-platform has such a detrimental effect on the gameplay experience of non-PC players, so I'm going to dig deeper into that discussion here as well. In the last video, I mainly focused on how forced cross-platform is being used to influence die-hard Fortnite fans on console to make the switch to PC, sort of as a pay-to-win advantage that they now need to compete. I still think this effect holds true, but Epic is also interested in maintaining their PC player base. Queue times were apparently pretty long on PC during Season X, suggesting that the PC player base was waning. I speculate that one of the primary reasons for forced cross-platform was to reduce the queue times for PC players and to add in players from lesser platforms to serve as fodder. It's no secret that Fortnite on PC was the most serious and competitive platform for the game, and I think Epic correctly thought that this type of environment dissuaded many new or less experienced players from sticking around to get better at the game. So not only does Force Cross-Platform hopefully get players to switch over from console to PC, but it keeps those already on PC happier as they now get to play against watered down competition, and if we look at the stats, console players, at least up through the end of 2018, vastly outnumber PC players, and if this stat holds true, then it is likely that many PC players will get into mostly console lobbies, making for easier wins and a more fun experience. One thing is for certain, and that's that forced cross-platform was not put in for the benefit of console and mobile players. Now let's talk about why cross-platform screws over non-PC players. First off, Fortnite is one of the worst games to do forced cross-platform on due to the biggest deciding factor in fights being speed and ping, pretty much speed of multiple inputs. When you look at a game like Rocket League, it's a great game by the way, cross-platform is a non-issue and not noticeable. It's not because the game has a low skill ceiling either. It's because the game design, its simplistic and analog style of control input, lends itself to fair cross-platform play. To better understand this, let's quickly look at two different types of inputs or controls, analog and digital. An analog input is one that follows a smooth and continuous degree of severity from one point to another. Think about the analog stick on a controller. As you push it farther forward, the signal increases. It's a simple and more tangible input, and while being simple offers a ton of flexibility in that input without demanding many buttons, again like the analog stick of a controller. This is largely how controlling your car in Rocket League works and where mastery of the game is focused on. On the other hand, there is digital input. Digital input is best thought of as an on or off signal. You click the A or jump button to jump, you click the trigger to fire. Digital inputs are inherently simple and do not offer any flexibility through just one input. In order to get flexibility with digital inputs, you need to increase the number of digital inputs involved. This is largely how controlling your character in Fortnite works and where mastery of this game is focused on. In Rocket League, there are not a ton of possible items and or structures or modes you need to switch between. It's just your car with an analog input for controlling that car, where you can rotate in the air and do awesome tricks and you can pull off some really fancy moves and don't get me wrong, the ways with which you can interact with the ball to successfully score a goal becomes extremely complicated as you reach higher skill levels, but at its core, it's still the same analog input for moving the car around. You're only boosting and rotating at the right times in the right ways. Fortnite is not like this. It's more like an RTS where constant digital inputs, place wall, edit wall, switch to shotgun, shoot, place wall, place ramp, place roof, etc. is the most important factor to win. It is actions per minute that matter in Fortnite, digital over analog. 
When you compare the controls for Rocket League between PC and console, there are no clear advantages. You don't even need an Elite controller to be competitive on Rocket League, and rotating and smooth control of your car through the air is the most important factor to being successful. Even with a higher frame rate and more buttons to work with, PC players don't have a measurable advantage over console players because it is about that more simple analog input which is not dependent on the multiple, extremely fast and frame rate dependent digital inputs. On Fortnite, there are tons of inputs going on constantly. Not only does the numerous amount of additional digital inputs, the keys and the mouse buttons, give PC players a huge advantage in that regard, but the high frame rate offered by higher end PCs means that more operations can be completed in a shorter amount of time on PC than on the lower frame rate platforms. This is why PC players have almost no problem taking walls of console players. The higher frame rate and multiple key bindings allows them to instantly place a wall after breaking it with their pickaxe. A PC player does not need to worry about switching from pickaxe to building, then to place the wall. They can just pickaxe and then with a single button click, place a wall. And at 100 to 240 frames per second, they will win against the console player every time. One argument I see floating around is that skill-based matchmaking will take care of this because if you are on console and therefore not able to handle high-skilled PC players, you will be ranked low enough so that the PC players you do compete against are bad enough so it shouldn't matter. But this completely misses the point of what makes a battle royale fun and rewarding to play. At the moment, the reward for getting better at the game is completely destroyed on non-PC platforms. The cap ends up being that too many players have the hardware advantage, but even with just skill-based matchmaking, the reward for getting better is greatly diminished, because you don't see the tangible results of that improvement. If anything, you are now winning less because of your improved skill, not more. Ask anyone playing for at least a few months that has won their fair share of games before Chapter 2. One of the most rewarding experiences to this game was winning in an even, non-skill-based matchmaking system, where you knew that you were competing on an even playing field against a lobby of randomly picked opponents. It meant that whether you were good or bad, your opponents were always picked in the same way, randomly. Because of this, getting better was noticeable as you played the game more. You became better and your win rate went up. Skill-based matchmaking alone diminishes this aspect of reward, but if it was contained within the same platform, I, and many others, would not have as much of an issue with it, because it would still be an even playing field. All of that is thrown out the window when you introduce forced cross-platform into the mix. Now not only are your opponents increasingly more skilled as a result of you getting better at the game, but on top of it, they will more and more often be PC players with potentially massive hardware advantages that completely alter the experience of defeat. It is no longer asking yourself what you did wrong to get eliminated, it is more often you asking yourself how did they even do that as they seamlessly take whichever wall they like and 360 box and trap you within the same amount of time it took you to switch from your builds to your pickaxe or weapon. To sum it up, this shift in mentality for most average to above average console players in Chapter 2 of Fortnite, it went from this is hard, but if I keep at it I can improve my performance and be intrinsically rewarded by doing better, to what is the point of getting better if it just means I get my ass whooped by more PC players as a result. And so the incentive to play the core modes is lost mostly because of that. Compounding this issue is that XP games in the core modes are so meager when compared to the boatloads of XP that you can get through Rumble. Without any XP related reasons to play the core modes and with the intrinsic reward for being good at the game completely destroyed by cross platform with skill based matchmaking, it's hard to find any reason to play the core modes as a console player. Now for all of the people I see complaining on Reddit about this and even on my own channel and my videos about Force cross platform, it seems like many of the bigger figures and influencers of Fortnite are completely ignorant, maybe willfully so, to this problem. All you have to do is look at the pro Fortnite scene, where the occasional PC player using a controller and performing well is frequently used as an argument that console players can compete with PC, and this is anecdotal and ignores the fact that these are PC players using controllers. They still have 240 frames per second, 
and less than 15 ping. Usually my ping is sitting around 45 to 60 milliseconds, and my frame rate generally hovers around 40 FPS, but can get even lower, you know, around 20 FPS in certain areas or trying to do specific actions. Not only are there really popular Fortnite players that think it's no problem that there's forest cross-platform, there are actually a pretty good amount of pro Fortnite players that think that controller gives an advantage. And so recently, pro players on PC were calling out another pro player that was using a controller and won a squad-based tournament. His name is Mary Unknown. They pointed towards aim assist and that that was an unfair advantage in the reason why he was able to win. And this is completely ridiculous when it is an exception that a controller player or a controller user wins a pro tournament, not the rule. The vast majority of successful competitive Fortnite players are using keyboard and mouse, and you would be hard pressed to find a single competitive Fortnite player that is actually using a console to run the game. I haven't tried using a controller on PC, I play on Xbox One X, so I don't know just how effective aim assist for controllers on PC is, but again, we're not talking about that, we are talking about console play against PC, and in that regard, the aim assist that console players are given nowhere near makes up for the accuracy of using a keyboard and mouse on PC. Overall, this forced cross-platform system is the major drain on enjoyment of the game for most console players that have recently lost interest. This is also compounded by the lack of new content, besides the Star Wars event which was pretty cool. Overall, the game is pretty static right now, which causes a loss of interest for players on all platforms, but for many non-PC players, it's the final nail in the coffin. Investment in the game is gone, and spending money on cosmetics has me asking the same question as playing the core modes and getting better at the game. What's the point? And that is bad for Epic's business. So to Epic Games, all I can say is wake up and cut the BS with this forced cross-platform. Oh, and there are some other great games you can try playing, games that I've been playing, if you are tired of Fortnite's forced cross-platform. The first I'll bring up is the only multiplayer, it's Rocket League. I talked about it earlier and it still has a really high skill ceiling, but you don't have to worry about cross-platform. It's not everybody's game, it's going to be difficult to pick up if you're new, and there's not many games like it, so it takes a while to get comfortable with the controls, but once you've done that, it's actually very fun and rewarding. And then there's some single player games I've been enjoying a lot too. One of those is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. If you like Star Wars, I bet you'll like this game. Another is Resident Evil 2 Remake, which it's just a really fun 15 hours or so of great quality single player survival horror. Diablo 3 Adventure Mode is also really fun. If you own Diablo 3 and haven't played it for ages, try the new Adventure Mode, which sort of speeds up progression and gets you more access to unique legendaries. Also try the Necromancer class, which is seriously overpowered and fun. Uh, Hollow Knight is the last one on this list. If you haven't played it, it's an incredible single player indie game. It's really affordable. It's like, I think $7, maybe it's 15 but it's totally worth the price. If you liked any of the side-scroller Metroid games like Metroid Fusion, you'll probably fall in love with this game. And if you've been playing any other games or you're thinking of any other games that are really fun and enjoyable, feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Okay, so this was an extremely long video, so if you stuck around to the end, I want to say an extra thank you for your support. Other than that, I'll leave it there. Have a great day if you're here today. Have a great Wednesday, and as always, thanks for watching.